Hey, how's it going guys? Welcome to another PyQD5 tutorial video. My name is Jay. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add images to a Qtree view widget. So here's the, the exercise we'll be doing. Right here is my PyQD application. Inside this application, I have a Qtree view widget. And within this Qtree view widget, I have two rows. So each row representing a, an item. And for each item, I have an image. Uh, as well as the caption. So here, let me make the window a little bit bigger. So do something very simple. We'll insert uh, two rows, and for each row, we'll insert image plus the caption, and that's it. I'll start by importing the system module. From the Qt widgets module, I'm going to import Q application class, Q main window class, and Q tree view widget class. From the Qt core module, I'll import Q standard item model class, Q standard item, and Qt class. So these three classes from Qt core module. And from the Qt GUI module, I'll import a Q font class, Q color, and Q image class. And those are the classes that I'll be using for this exercise. Next, I'm going to create my app demo class. And this is going to be used to us my uh, application template. And I will assign Q main window class as the parent class. Here are the two images that I'll be using. So one image has a couple cats. And the other image is a photo of Taipei. When you're inserting images to a Q3 widget, just make sure that uh, your image size is relatively small. So here, let me resize my window. And I'll set the window to 1200 by 1200. Next, I'll create my tree view instance. It's equals to Q tree view. And I'll configure some of the settings. So I'll set the header using the set header heading property. And I'll set the value to two. I also want to make sure that uh, the rows are stretched. So I'll insert the tree view object dot header dot set stretch last section. I'll set the value to two. And to display the items, I need to create a model. And I'll name this model tree model. It goes to Q standard item model. And we need to create a root node. It goes to tree model. Dot invisible root item. And here let me create my Q application instance. And I'll create my app demo instance as demo. And here I'll type demo.show to show the application. Let me just launch the window to make sure that uh, there's no typo in this thing. Here, let me see. Okay, so I have a typo. Oh, okay, so I see I know why. Uh, these two classes should go into Qt GUI uh, module. To display each item, I'll be using the Q standard item class to store the information and the values that I want to present in my Q tree view widget. So here I'm going to create a template uh, to create my Q standard item object. And I'll name the class standard item. Okay. <clears throat> and I'll pass Q standard item class as the parent class. And within the init uh, method, I'm going to set some couple of uh, parameters. The first parameter is the text I want to display. I'm going to set the default as empty string. Next is the image path. And I'll set the default weight empty string as well. Font size. And I also want to have the option to set the font as bold. So I'll set the 
very true false and the last parameter is the font color so I'll pass q color uh, class and I'll provide the RGB value with uh, triple zeros and I'll set the font color as black Alright, so here let me create my font style. I'll use Open Sense as my default style, followed by the font size. In case you want to set the captions bold, so here we can use the set bold method. It'll provide the set bold argument, and followed by a couple uh, default settings. So I'm going to set the Editable setting to false for the foreground color, which is the font color. I'll pass the color argument in the fonts, and this one will be the text we want to display. So set text, and if you want to display image. So here I'm going to check whether or not if the image argument is empty string. If the image path is not empty string, then I want to create an image object. And I'll pass the image path. And to display the image, I'll use set data method. And I'll pass the image object. And for the row, I'm going to use qt dot decoration row. And this is everything we need to write to create our QStandard item template. Now let's go back to the app demo class. So we'll create the root node. Let's say I want to create my parent node as let's say uh, let's name this as photos. I'm going to insert the standard item template and I'll display the text photos. Actually, my photos. And since this is the parent node, I don't want to display any image. So I'll set the uh, parameter value as empty string. I'll set the bow value to 2. And once I have the parent node created, I can create each row individually to display the item as well as the text. So this one's going to be cat image. And I'll name the object cat. It's equals to standard item. And this is the text I want to display in the image path. So the image path is going to be on the images followed by the file name. Images and the file name is cat.jpg. I'll set the font size to 14. And I'm going to add the cat image to the photos object. I'll use the append row method and I'll pass the cat object. And I'll do the same for the other image. It is equals to standard item, type A, followed by the image path. And I'll set the font size to, let's do 16 to make the fonts a little bit bigger. Now I can add the image to the photos object. Once we add all the items to the photos object, we need to add the photo object to the roots node. And we set photos object. And we need to set the model to the tree view widget. So set model. And I'll provide the tree model object. And this one's optional. In case if you want to display all the items by default, then we'll insert the expand all method. And I'll set the central widget with the tree view object. And that's it. Alright, now if I launch the window, and here's a typo. Oh, set central widget. And this is the cat's image, so which is the first row. And here's the image of Taipei, which is the second row. And my photo is one of the parent nodes, so just this uh, this photos object right here. And I can collapse the photos and expand the photos.
All right, so this is someone to share in this video, and hopefully you guys found the video useful. As always, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next video.